Welcome to another adventure of Read Ready, Set, Go, in which we look at content, movie reviews, anything that's going to give us motivation and positivity to move forward in our lives. And so I want to look specifically at a movie called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. This is actually not going to be the quickest of reviews because it's such a contextual piece and it's more than just a movie to me. It looks at a lot of things that are relevant, especially to the African-American community. Um, it looks at San Francisco and it looks at the degradation of a community not a degradation community. It, it looks at a community in which now gentrification has ta is taking place and it put and what it looks like when individuals are pushed out of their own city and an individual by the name of jimmy fails is it follows him and his best friend and this movie to me can be best compared to the african-american version of of mice and men meets there will be blood like if you can mix those together it's so interesting and then drizzle it with like tony morrison's mysticism you would have some type of resemblance of last black man in san francisco anyway it's more it's gorgeous it's a gorgeous film it looks like a literal like children's book like it tells a story as if you were telling it through the lens of like telling this once upon a time there was kind of lens and then it moves forward with looking at the dichotomies of the city like the individuals who make up the city so you have characters inserted in the movie that seem familiar to those individuals who live in a very urban community so it opens with the individual giving his take on how community is changing and shifting and they're looking at him like oh this is how jail can mess the individual's mind up but then you're left to think who's more rational the individual that they're calling crazy or themselves and so the movie moves forward with jimmy and jonathan i believe let me see so jimmy and jonathan are close friends and jonathan is very supportive of jimmy jimmy sneaks and does maintenance work on a house he grew his childhood home this house means everything to him because that's where all of his memories come from and all of his fondest memories and all of the folklore and legendary information legendary imprints that was left throughout the family and so to him it's like his um not wise tale what are those stories called they're long tales whenever he was talking about the man with two seven feet tall it's kind of like his the tales that are inserted through his family that his grandfather built this house with his own bare arms and so jimmy believe you know he carries this with him he tells his friend jonathan these stories and jonathan actually supports jimmy when he goes over and does maintenance on the home mind you there are owners who live there that do not know jimmy so they think it's very weird and odd that he comes over and does maintenance on the house and the story moves forward wherever those individuals eventually move out of the home and so he sees that they're moving out and so there starts the adventure and i won't do any spoiler alerts but i will say that jimmy decides to move in his house <laughs> and the adventures go from there why is this movie very relevant because it just shows how a home that was owned through his family and who and that was they probably i'm assuming that they lost the house um but through like the drug epidemic came through and his father probably lost the home and they could no longer take care of the house and how jimmy had been fed so many different stories of what happened to the house that he never knew exactly what happened so he was trying to preserve his family legacy but what he really didn't realize is there was no family legacy to really behold because he'd been told so many fallacies about the house and he i think he was just looking for something tangible to believe in while on earth but the things he was lit, holding on to were fallacies. And so he's met with characters such as his, I think it's his cousin or his uncle that's played by Mike Epps, who brings in a sense of kind of a negative vibe, but yet he's, he's comedy relief. What I like most about this is that Jimmy was surrounded by people who really cared about him, how, which was in the likes of Jonathan and Jonathan's grandfather, who's played by Danny Glover. However, he couldn't feel their love because he didn't have it inside to feel for himself. And I think this house was his last ditch effort of feeling some type of importance or feeling important to himself. Cause it's actually a scene in which there's like a tours being held 
and a tour guide comes by and talks about the history of the home and jimmy's like no that's not true my grandfather built this house so he felt the need to insert these fallacies that he had been told as a child but i think he did it because he felt important and then the story moves from there there's also neighborhood guys in his current neighborhood that are gang i guess they're trying to be gang said they were gang affiliate and so the story tells the story of those individuals as well on the surface this story looks just like this movie is just seems like it's just a regular story of whether or not he's going to get this house if that's how you perceive it whereas like if you look at my review for goldie goldie in that movie it was about this yellow coat it wasn't just about the yellow coat it was everything else like it's everything else about this house that makes the story so relevant about not losing it it was like that one last thing he had felt he had before he loses everything and there's also a scene where he sees his mom and his mom didn't even really recognize him for real. She was like, oh, hi, Jimmy. And he, he was like, I didn't even know you were back in town. And it was just little things like that. It was just like the distance that he had with his family. It was the one thing he felt he that he did have. And so this movie is great because it just challenges us to think and believe. And think about those individuals that are affected by gentrification. And how it's not just about the house or the property. Because some people say, well, just go somewhere else. It's about the family lineage and legacy that are in these homes. And that they individuals may have a home, owned homes their entire lives. Like going back to like their great grandmother. And now they themselves can't afford it. And they may work two or three jobs. So this is a great movie. It's very, it's so well put together. Um, the the song the exiting song like wear flowers in your hair it's done in such a soulful way um uh, make sure you wear flowers in your hair and i'm not a singer so it was just everything was well done i cried when i very first saw it i've seen it now two or three times because there's pieces that i always seem to miss but this is an awesome movie it just provided perspective i know what it's like i've owned a home before and i've same thing i had it for family reasons and the process of, to being a homeowner it's difficult it's a lot that goes into being a homeowner um and for me it was just easier to sell and that in itself was an adventure as well so i understand that the memories that a home carries and why jimmy would fight so hard and how this actually fit because jimmy fails is actually playing himself and this is actually a movie he directed and um if he didn't direct it he was behind it and it actually is his story so it's interesting i did see it through a dude set of eyes since post quarantine because there were some scenes where people were in like quarantine outfits and they were dealing with individuals in the water so i thought that was interesting so anyway yeah so definitely check out last black man in san francisco